Hello friends, in this video we will study about IIR filter design and the given part is this. We have to use the impulse invariance method to solve this question and we have to find n that is the order of the filter, cutoff frequency and poles. So three things we have to find the given part is this and the method that we have to use is impulse invariance method. So let's start. First let's look at the given part. You can see that omega is given that from 0 to 0 0.4 pi our amplitude decreases from 1 to 0 0.89 when omega ranges from 0 0.6 pi to pi our magnitude decreases from 0 0.18 so let's plot the graph so suppose this is the y-axis this is the x-axis in y-axis we have the amplitude that is the mod of h of e raised to j omega and in the x-axis we have the omega all right so this is the graph now, first part is omega ranges from 0 to let's say here 0 0.4 pi. Our amplitude decreases from let's say 1 is this point from 1 to let's say 0 0.89. So let's say this is 0 0.89. Alright. And so from 0 0.6 pi to pi, our magnitude decreases from 0 0.18. So let's say 0 0.18 is here. So it is decreasing. So this is the question and let's say this is 0 0.18. So this is the given part. Let's complete the graph. So the remaining graph would be like this. So this is nothing but a low pass filter. So the first point is it is a low pass filter. As you can see the graph at the lower frequency it is passing and at the higher frequency it is attenuating. All right. So this is a low pass filter and second point you have to take away from this. So this side I will write the steps. So steps to solve the IIR filter. First, so in the first step you have to find the pass band attenuation, the stop band attenuation, the pass band frequency and the stop band frequency. So from this graph you can find the first step. So you have to mark this two point. Now the question is why. This point represents omega p comma a p. And this represents omega s comma a s. So this is the pass band frequency. So omega p is equal to you can see that in the x axis that is 0 0.4 pi. And respective attenuation would be pass band attenuation that is a p is equal to 0 0.89. Similarly for the stop band. So the stop band frequency is 0 0.6 pi. And the pass band, uh, stop band attenuation is 0 0.18. So the first step is clear like finding the attenuation and the frequencies. Now the second point is about the orders. Now the second point is about finding the order that is n. So this is nothing but the order of filter. So the formula for this is n is equal to half of log of. So we have this bracket and the bracket value is 1 by a square minus 1 upon 1 by a p square minus 1 upon we have again the log and the value here is omega s upon omega p. So the second point is finding the order but you can see that in order we require this analog frequencies. So let's say the second point is analog frequency and then the third point is finding the order because this is still unknown. Now this step is the decisive step. So why this step is important because for the BLT the formula is different and for the impulse invariance method the formula is different. Now we have the impulse invariance method. So the formula would be so for the impulse invariance method the formula is omega p is equal to wp upon ts. So this is the digital frequency. This is the analog frequency. That is the first point. Now P means the pass band frequency, S means the stop band frequency. The formula is same like analog frequency is equal to digital frequency by TS. Now let's assume TS is 1. So what would be the answer? This would be the answer for pass band. This would be the answer for stop band. Now let's substitute this value here. If you substitute the value here, so substitute the value here. If you substitute the value here, now this is known to you. ASAP is known to you because of the step 1. So the value here would be after substitution it would be similar to 6. So the first point was about the attenuation and the frequency. Second point was about the decidive one because the method can be two. First it can be BLT bilinear transform or it can be impulse invariance method.
now in our question we have iim so what we did we used this formula all right after using this formula we got the value of analog frequency as you can note here after getting that you can get the value of the order of the filter that is n is equal to 6 so the order of filter is 6 now the fourth step is finding the cutoff frequency so the cutoff frequency is represented like this and the formula for the cutoff frequency is very simple it is omega of p upon we have in the denominator as 1 by a p square minus 1 raised to 1 by 2 n now the value of n is known from the step 3 so the value of n is 6 substitute that you have this value also you have this value also and from the previous slide you have this value also so the answer that come out here is 1.405 so this is the answer so the fourth step was finding the cutoff frequency so we are done with the two part like finding the order of the filter and also the cutoff frequency now the fifth point is finding the poles so let's see that so the last point is finding the poles and the formula is pk is equal to plus minus cutoff frequency into e raised to j 1 plus n plus 2k into pi upon 2n now you can note that every value is known like cutoff frequency you know n value you know only the problem is k is what is your question now k is equal to 0 to n minus 1 now what is n correct n was 6 so the range would be 0 to 5 because it is n minus 1 so 6 minus 1 is 5 now for k is equal to 0 find the respective poles like p of 0 would be plus minus the cutoff value and the cutoff value was 1.405 into e raised to j we have 1 plus 6 plus 2 times 0 and into pi then we have 2 into 6 after solving this you will get the value as minus 0 0.37 plus j 1.37 and you will get 0 0.37 minus j 1.37 so this was the p0 similarly you have to find k is equal to 1 respect to p1 and k is equal to 2 respect to p2 and so on so after substitution of the value of k like k is equal to 1 you will get p1 and the value of the poles will be this similarly if k is 2 the value of p2 would be this similarly if k is 3 the p3 would be this p4 would be this and p5 would be this so these are the poles and we are done with the question so let's see the flow of the question first you would be given the problem statement and the problem would have the given part like attenuation and the frequency so you have to figure it out what is the pass band attenuation stop band attenuation pass band frequency stop band frequency so the first step would be that then you have to go for the methods like whether it is BLT method or it is impulse invariance method because after that you can apply the formula for this analog frequency because this is important after getting this you can find the order like the order of filter after getting that you can find the cutoff frequency and after getting that you can find the poles so this was the flow i hope you liked the video तो फ्रेंड्स अगर आपको मेरी वीडियो पसंद आ रही हो देन टू लाइक दिस वीडियो शेयर विद योर फ्रेंड्स एंड सब्सक्राइब टू माय YouTube चैनल तो मिलते हैं अगली वीडियो में टिल देन टेक केयर दिस इज श्रेनिक जैन पीस आउट